Hello, in this video I'm going to mention the question, what is the best cooling configuration for Leon Lee's brand new Landcool 3? So I've had a really busy day, I've tested 16 different cooling configurations in the case, ranging from air coolers to AIOs, so if you are thinking of doing a build in the case, you're definitely not going to want to miss this video. So before we get into the cooling, I think it's important to say I have already made a full step-by-step -step build guide to building in this case. I'm not currently planning on making a separate case review because in that video I spent about 20 minutes going through the case and all its features. So if you do want to find out more about the case, check out the start of that build guide. Taking a look at the build I put together, we had a 99-12700K being cooled with a 360mm AIO at the front of the case set to intake. I put an additional set of Leon Lee's AL120 unifans on the back of the radiator, giving us a push-pull configuration. I had another set of AL120 unifans at the bottom set to intake. I had three SL140 unifans at the top set to exhaust and a single SL140 unifan at the rear as an exhaust. For the graphics card, I used the Zotec Gaming RTX 3070 Ti AMP Holo. In terms of overclocking, the only thing I did was enable the XMP profile on the RAM, and all of the fans were running on the stock motherboard fan curves, taking their temperature off the CPU. So, taking a look at our temperatures, our CPU idled at 27 degrees and reached a maximum of 77 degrees during the 10 minute IDA64 stability test. Our GPU idled at 30 degrees and reached a maximum of 63 degrees during the IDA64 stability test. In terms of noise, this was also very good at only 36 decibels at idle and 51 decibels under load. So, both the temperature and noise levels were really impressive, so we're off to a good start. But I want to dig into things in a bit of detail and try and figure out why we've got such good temperatures. So the first thing I wanted to look at was did having the fans in a push-pull configuration at the front make any difference? So I removed the Lee and the Uni fans behind the radiator and re-ran the same tests again. So taking a look at the results, there was absolutely no difference to the idle temperatures or noise level. While without the push-pull configuration, our CPU ran 2 degrees hotter during the IDA64 stability test and was associated with an extra 1 decibel of noise during the stability test. So having the fans in a push-pull configuration definitely added a little bit to our temperatures, and the fact that our CPU was running a little bit cooler probably explains why the noise levels were a little bit quieter as well. And in fact, the Leon Lee Uni fans are really quiet, and having an extra 3 fans actually resulted in less noise rather than more noise. So would I recommend a push-pull configuration? Well, the biggest reason for me doing it was just the aesthetics. I thought having the back of the AL120 uni fans in the case matching all the other fans looked really good, although it is going to come at a significant cost and it's not really going to bring your temperatures down by that much. So you're going to have to factor all those things in to decide whether you think push-pull is the right decision or not for you. The next thing that I want to look at was is the mesh from panel on the Lancool 3 restrictive? So I ran exactly the same tests again with and without the front panel. I decided to leave the push-pull configuration off the back of the radiator, so we're running just the three fans that came with the AIO on the front of the radiator. So taking a look at the temperatures, the only difference was that our maximum CPU temperature came down by 2 degrees during the IDA64 stability test, and it was associated with 1 decibel less noise with the front panel removed. So obviously I'm not recommending you take the front panel off your new Landcool 3, the reason for doing this test, it's really a test of how good the mesh panel on the front of the case is, and a reduction in temperature by 1 or 2 degrees is an absolutely excellent result. 7, 8, 9 degrees is a pretty bad result, and that would indicate that the front panel on a case is very restrictive. So putting all that together, the front panel on this case is really good. The next thing that I want to look at was does having the removable SSD mounting plate on the mesh panel at the back affect the temperatures? Leon Lee do mention in the manual that this can be removed for improved airflow, but does it actually make any difference? So take a look at the results. The answer to that question is no. There was absolutely no difference to any of our temperatures or noise levels regarding whether you left that panel on or not. So if you are planning on building in this case, 
I don't think there's any need to remove the panel. The next thing that I wanted to do was have a look and see whether having hard drive cages down at the bottom of the case actually affected the airflow. So because I was using cable extensions, I wasn't able to fit all four of the hard drive cages at the bottom, but I was able to fit three of them. So to take a look at the results, there was absolutely no difference to the temperatures or noise levels at idle. While our CPU temperature with the hard drive cages installed went up by two degrees during the IDA64 stability test, and this was also associated with one decibel less noise. So my advice if you're building in the Landcool 3, if you're not occupying the hard drive trays at the bottom, I would remove them. It's very simple to do that. I've covered that in my step-by-step -step build guide. Although if you do want to use them, it's no big deal. You're not significantly affecting your airflow. It's only an increase in your CPU temperatures by two degrees during a very stressful test, such as the IDA64 stability test. The next thing that I want to look at was how having your graphics card mounted vertically rather than horizontally affected the temperatures. So I looked at this both with the IIO at the front and with the IIO mounted at the top. So starting off with the IIO mounted at the front, there was no difference to your idle CPU temperatures, while our CPU temperature went up by one degree during the IDA64 stability test with the graphics card mounted vertically. GPU temperatures also increased with the graphics card mounted vertically by one degree at idle and three degrees under load, and there was no difference to the noise levels. With the IO set to exhaust at the top, there was no difference to the temperatures at idle. However, both the CPU and GPU temperatures increased by two degrees under load with the graphics card mounted vertically. In terms of noise levels, there was no significant difference with the vertical graphics card being associated with one decibel of extra noise at idle and one decibel less noise under load. So the results here are fairly clear. In terms of temperatures, you are definitely going to be better with your graphics card mounted horizontally. Um, that's going to save you money as well because the vertical GPU kits, particularly with a Gen 4 riser cable, are not going to be cheap either. So unless you absolutely love the look of the graphics card in the vertical orientation, I personally felt it actually looked better horizontally. I would stay away from the vertical mount in this case. The next thing that I want to look at was did having fans below the graphics card improve the temperatures? And again, I looked at this both with the IO at the front as intake and the IO at the top set to exhaust. So starting off with the IO at the front set to intake, the graphics card definitely did like having the fans beneath it and the idle temperatures came down by two degrees and the temperatures under load came down by three degrees. It was the opposite story with the CPU temperatures and they increased by three degrees during the IDA64 stability test. Having the fans at the bottom was also associated with more noise by one decibel at idle and two decibels under load. It was a fairly similar story with the IO at the top. The GPU temperatures came down by one degree at idle and two degrees under load with the fans beneath the graphics card. Although with the fans at the bottom, our CPU was one degree hotter during the IDA64 stability test, and it was associated with an extra two decibels of noise under load. So weighing all that up, it's hard to make any firm recommendations about whether you should or shouldn't install fans at the bottom. Your GPU temperatures will definitely come down, but that's going to be offset by your CPU temperatures going up, the noise levels in the build going up, and it also costs you more money. From an aesthetic point of view, definitely I think the AL120 unifans at the bottom of the case looked really good in the actual main body of the case. The one downside with having ARGB fans at the bottom is they did shine a lot of light into that bottom power supply compartment and any of the cables at the bottom were actually visible through the mesh panel at the front. So aesthetically there were some advantages and some disadvantages of doing it. So I think you're going to have to weigh that up yourself and decide whether it's worth going with or not. Just before we leave the fans at the bottom, I did want to try just having one fan installed at the bottom centered beneath the GPU. The reason behind this was that actually having the power supply at the back, the fan under it wasn't probably doing very much. And also at the front of the case, the fan under it was probably mostly blowing past the GPU. So it was actually thought it was probably the fan in the middle that was doing the most work. And if you could get away with having one fan, it was gonna save you quite a bit of money. Um, although aesthetically, I don't think one fan at the bottom would work for me. Although some people may be quite happy with that. So taking a look at the results, the idle noise and temperatures were exactly the same as when we had three fans at the bottom. Although under load, our GPU was two degrees hotter and two decibels quieter, 
than when we had three fans at the bottom. So I don't think I would recommend having one fan at the bottom. In terms of the temperatures and noise, there's no strong argument for it there. Um, but in terms of the aesthetics, I think one fan in the middle looks really ugly and it wouldn't be something that I would recommend. I think you're much better having three fans at the bottom or no fans at the bottom. The next thing I want to look at was, are you better having your AIO at the front set to intake or at the top set to exhaust? So having the AIO at the front set to intake was associated with the CPU running at three degrees cooler at idle and four degrees cooler under load. The only downside to that was the GPU ran one degree hotter during the IDA64 stability test with the I.O. as a front intake. In terms of noise levels, the I.O. at the front set to intake was associated with one decibel less noise both at idle and under load. So if you look just at the temperatures and the noise level, the answer is fairly clear. Put your I.O. at the front set to intake. The one thing, however, you do have to consider is that that is going to be a little bit more work in terms of the building process because you are going to have to remove the front fans and if you want, for example, to put them at the top, move them to the top and reconnect everything up again. So there's a little bit more work to it, but probably the other factor I think you have to consider, and you mightn't come up with this on first thoughts, is that the three 140mm fans at the front look so much better than three 120 it's not just the size thing, um, because of the front radiator bracket, you can actually see past the 3120mm fans into the main compartment when you look from the front. Um, but when you've got 3140mm fans, you can't actually see into the main compartment looking from the front. So it definitely looks better with 3140mm fans at the front, and you're going to have a much easier building process. But they're just few things you're going to have to factor in and weigh up to decide which way you want to build in the case. The next thing that I want to look at was how good are the case fans that come with the Lanco 3. I have the ARGB version which comes with three 140mm ARGB fans at the front and a single 140mm non-RGB fan at the back. When I did my build guide I did remove these fans purely for aesthetic purposes and went with Lee and Lee Uni fans. So I compared these fans to Lee and Lee SL140 Uni fans. So the only difference between exactly the same configuration using the stock fans and the Lian Li SL140 uni fans was that our CPU idled one degree hotter and there was one decibel of extra noise using the stock case fans. So this tells us that the fans that Lian Li have put in this case are actually really good in terms of airflow and noise levels. And as well aesthetically, I think they look really well. This is the stock fans that you're looking at now at the front of the case. So I think you have to have a really good reason to re replace them. The last thing that I want to look at was how good is the case in terms of air cooling. So I installed Deepcool's AK620, which I've been very impressed with in the past, and has given me similar temperatures to Noctua's NHD15 at a fraction of the price. So I decided to start off with just the stock case fans installed. So taking a look at the temperatures, our CPU idled at 31 degrees and reached a maximum of 87 degrees during the Ida64 stability test. Our GPU idled at 32 degrees, reaching a maximum of 65 degrees during the stability test. Noise levels were also pretty good at 35 decibels at idle and 50 decibels under load. The next thing I want to look at was did adding more fans into our build actually improve temperatures? So I added three of Lian Li's SL140 uni fans to the top set to exhaust. Taking a look at the results, there's absolutely no difference to the temperatures or noise levels at idle. During the Ida64 stability test, having the fans at the top, our CPU ran two degrees hotter, while our GPU temperature came down by one degree. Having the extra fans at the top was also associated with one decibel of extra noise during the stability test. So adding more fans at the top actually hurt rather than helped. So the next thing I wanted to do was adding three fans in at the bottom set to intake. So this was even worse in terms of noise and temperatures. With our CPU and GPU temperatures at idle going up by one degree, and the CPU temperature under load going up by five degrees, and also an additional five decibels of extra noise during the Ida64 stability test. The final thing I wanted to check was occupying all the fan mounting locations, so adding additional three SL140 uni fans at the top set to exhaust, and three AL120 uni fans at the bottom set to intake. Take a look at the results, the idle temperatures and noise levels were exactly the same as our last configuration, whereas our CPU and GPU temperatures under load 
came down by one degree compared to just having fans at the bottom. However, both the temperatures and noise levels were still significantly worse than having just the stock fans installed. So in terms of air cooling in the Land Co 3, less is definitely more. You're not going to want to add any extra fans in because it's going to make your temperatures worse, it's going to give you more noise, it's going to cost you more money, and it's going to make the build more difficult. So there's absolutely no reason to do it. Um, it's going to be a really straightforward build. All you're going to have to do is put an air cooler in the middle and connect the fans at the front and the fans at the rear to your motherboard. The fans at the front are already all combined into a single header and the ARGB is already connected up to the case's controller. So you'll have a really simple build if you decide to go with an air cooler. And in fact, I think it actually looks pretty good. And even not having an ARGB on the rear fan with an air cooler, I think actually looks much better than it would with an AIO. The final thing that I want to look at was comparing our best configuration with an AIO. And that was my original build with the push-pull configuration at the front versus our best build with an air cooler which was actually just the air cooler in the middle with the stock case fans. So take a look at the results. With the AIO, our CPU ran significantly cooler by four degrees at idle and 10 degrees under load. GPU temperatures were also better by two degrees, both at idle and under load. In terms of noise levels, the air cooler was the winner by one decibel, both at idle and under load. What I'm going to do now is put a summary slide up of all the different thermal configurations that I've tested. So you want to take a closer look at it, go ahead and pause the video now. So if you're hoping at the end of the thermal testing, I was going to tell you what is the best way to build in the Land Cool 3, you're going to be disappointed. Because the best way to build really depends on what is important to you in terms of the temperatures, in terms of the noise levels, in terms of the aesthetics, and in terms of the budget. And that's different for everyone. But hopefully the information that I've put together in all the different thermal configurations is going to help you work that out. For example, if the temperatures are the most important thing to you, it's really straightforward. Put an AIO at the front, set to intake in push-pull configuration, and that will give you the best temperatures in this case. If noise levels are the most important thing to you, the thermal testing is going to be really useful in deciding that. Adding extra Lian Li Uni fans or other equivalent good fans isn't really going to put the noise levels up that much, particularly if you go with an AIO. However, if you go with an air cooler, actually adding more fans in is going to make the noise levels worse and make the temperatures worse, particularly if you put the fans at the bottom. So knowing that information is going to help you work things out. In terms of aesthetics, uh, that's very subjective, but you hopefully have a, a few shots of all the different builds and that's gonna help you work things out, what is the best for you. Um, for me, I thought the build I put together right at the start was the best, but that's a really expensive build to put together with that amount of Lian Li Uni fans in it and actually taking out the case fans that I had paid for. The build I've got at the moment with the air cooler and the stock case fans also looks really good. And in terms of budget, and that's gonna be a fairly cheap build to put together. So like I say, you're gonna to have to weigh all these things up. Um, hopefully with the data and the shots that I've taken of each of the build guides, you're gonna be able to come up with what is the perfect build for you. So if you haven't seen my full step-by-step -step build guide in the Land Co 3, make sure you check it out. Like I said at the start, I'm not planning on doing a separate case review. The first 20 minutes of that video are what you want to watch if you want to find out everything about this case and all its different features and specifications. As well, if you have enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching.